Welcome everybody to another episode, episode number 10 of Entrepreneur Monday. And today I have the pleasure of having a distinguished guest, Ms. Brooke Turan. Brooke, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No, my pleasure. I want to get right into it because you have the opportunity that some would love to have. I just really want to get your perspective because I've known you for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, I think maybe since 2016 I've seen you grow and mature and mm -hmm. to now know and be a part of what you're doing as far as building your own business, it's exciting. Thank you. And TFA Champions, tell us a little bit about that before we get into the personal aspect of what exactly that is and what people can expect from it. Okay, well, you know, we have REMAX Champions here, so we right. have the real estate, the escrow, the mortgage, right. and then just recently we added financial services, okay. so TFA Champions. Right. So we're basically just helping our clients, agents, whoever need our services, um, to better secure their future, okay. so securing their financial future. Right. We do income protection, retirement planning, living trust, Love it. child savings plans, right. anything you could think of in terms of securing your financial future. Right. That's what I provide to my clients. Okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you get into that aspect of it? Because I know before, maybe about a week or so ago, you and I were having a conversation that you took a, a spiritual journey. I want to go mm -hmm. into that a little bit because that's going to lead the people into knowing why you want to protect people and help people. So if you don't mind, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I think that the reason I got into this, um, it kind of all happens, you know, how it was meant to happen. I didn't expect myself to be in financial right. services or in this field. I feel like I could be doing serving people, you know, wherever, but I'm meant to be here. Okay. Um, but yeah, my mom, you know, got the franchise and right. it's a huge privilege and a huge responsibility as well to operate it, you know, to build it, to create a team and uh, grow myself in financial services. And I think that the reason um, I surrendered so fully to it was, again, as you mentioned, I did go through, you know, spiritual journey and right. awakening or right. whatever you want to call it. Right, transformation. That calling to Jesus yeah. moment. <laughs> we all had that aha yeah. moment, yeah. So yeah. I'm, you know, going through that aha moment and um, realizing that fulfillment doesn't come through the material. It doesn't come True. through success. It doesn't come through those worldly things. It right. comes from, you know, within. It the comes inner from peace. The inner peace, serving others, right. loving yourself, loving others. Um, and it took me a long time to get there, you know, it took me going all the wrong ways right. to find, finally find that. But once you find it, you kind of, again, just follow it yeah. and you keep going with it and you keep growing, transforming, yeah. finding the ways you can surrender deeper to it. And with financial services, um, I think that entrepreneurship is in my blood. In my <laughs> it has to blood. be, absolutely. Your whole family is in it. Yeah. You know, your grandparents, your, yeah. your uncle, everybody's in that. Yeah, so it's I think it's, it's in our blood and I was very resistant to it. Really? Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you really quickly. Did you know when your mom purchased the franchise that she was going to purchase it for you? Or did you just kind of no. get thrown into it? How did that transition happen? She just told me to get my license so that she <laughs> started operating it. And I was like, okay, you know, I'll do this for her. And right. But then as I, you know, started on the journey of getting my license, it just, it felt right to keep going with it. And okay. I kind of did see that this was meant to be okay. all along, whether my mom... Um, planned it or whether right. she just kind of wanted to plant the seed and see if I took it. Right. It was, yeah, it just kind of led there of me just taking the torch and, and just running with running it. With it yeah. Right. That's a blessing. The spiritual guides that you talked about, worldly things come and go. We see that happen all the time. Regular people, athletes, entertainers, that's part of the process. But the one thing I like about what you said is finding that inner peace, but then transforming the inner peace into other people. Yes. Helping them with life insurance and financial planning mm -hmm. because Culturally, sometimes people aren't educated enough to know how to do that, and those are the services that you, that you provide. So let's get into that a little bit as well. The life insurance, annuity, tell yeah. us the importance and how those coincide with the spiritual aspect. Well, I would say if your finances aren't in check, you're not in check. True. As much as we want to, you know, we don't find fulfillment in the worldly, we still have to have a stable worldly so we can right. go out and surf, you know, so we can right. have that home stability that that financial stability to go out and serve and yeah, feeding ourselves first before we can pour into others. Right. And finances is an aspect of it. Um, so I feel like with, you know, life insurance, we're providing a vehicle where you can save your money, grow your money, um, and then get that protection if you were to come down with an illness. If you were to come down with chronic illness, critical illness, terminal illness, you right. have, you know, access to funds to deal with, you know, whatever illness you have. And that's a big misconception because you and I were talking about some concepts and videos we're going to do as far as life insurance. But most people think, I don't know what the percentage is, I'm not going to just throw a random number out, but I, most people think that life insurance, 
you don't, it doesn't benefit you until you die, and that's not the case. No, it's not the You case. have living benefits, living benefits that helped you, and get to a little bit of that too, because ultimately with Entrepreneur Monday, we want people to come your way. We don't want to thrash any other company, but we want somebody who is genuinely invested in that person and helping them with their financial wealth, their physical health, and their mental health, and you are the company that can do that with TFA Champions. Yeah, well, like you said, it's you don't have to die to access your <laughs> life insurance, <laughs> right. as morbid as it sounds, Right. Um, but that's the living benefits aspect, and there's three aspects to life insurance. Okay. There's disability, illness, and death, so that's the illness aspect, um, and yeah, you know, when we come down with with these illnesses, sometimes it it shocks your world. Right. Financially, it drains you. Right. But if you have the protection against that, it just makes moving through life a lot easier. Absolutely. You're moving through life with more ease. And um, confidence. And confidence, knowing that your you know your finances right. and your life is a little bit more secure. So let's say an instance like we're I'm in real estate. Uh, we work at Remax Champions with your mom or somebody. Let's say an entrepreneur who's a car salesman or has their own business. Mm -hmm. If they don't have medical insurance. That would be something that we could get in order to make sure that if we had a bump in the road or we got sick or even COVID to an extent, mm -hmm. that we could still be protected. Exactly. We do have health insurance within what we provide. I don't specialize specifically in health insurance, okay. but we have the resources within TFA Champions. Right. But correct. Yes. And that's the great thing is that you're a one-stop shop. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And that you don't just you're not just beholden to one carrier like something like a state mm -hmm. farm or farmers or people like that. You have a variety. To whereas whatever the issue is that person possesses, you can help them with it. Exactly. We have several different carriers, several different products. We're not just pushing one product, okay. saying this will change your life or this right. is going to help you. <laughs> we asked our clients, what do you need or what's your current financial situation? What right. are your goals for the future? What concerns do you have? Or what current policies do you have in place? Right. Then we move forward. Got you. We, it's a specialized plan for them for their goals. It's not a one size fits all. It's not a one size fits all. Because yeah. sometimes you hear about other companies and how they are and they just try to say, okay, buy this, buy this, buy this. You're not trying to go to Hawaii with anybody. You want to make sure that they're fully fulfilled with their needs, uh, finances, and other things as well. Exactly. And okay. we want our clients to feel safe to right. come to us and trust us as well. You know, to have long-term relationships with our clients, not right. just Selling them a product and leaving. Right. Like some other, you know, carriers. Yeah. Yeah. You want to be there for them. Now, that's a good aspect that we mentioned in the beginning is that you have the REMAX champions, you have the escrow and the mortgage. Mm -hmm. The mortgage aspect, something that you can cover that people may or may not know about, but I want you to get into as well, is mortgage protection. Mm -hmm. So when you get that mortgage for your house, you can be protected if something happens. Elaborate on that a little bit for me. So it's very similar. It's income protection, we okay. call it. So, you know, if come down with, again, illness, um, chronic illness, critical illness, critical injury, right. how are you going to pay your mortgage? Right. Where is that coming from? Exactly. And that's where the living benefits come in. Okay. You have access to the living benefits to pay off your mortgage, to keep those payments going. Wow. So you're not stuck in a hole. Right. Mm -hmm. Or falling behind in default. Falling behind, yeah. Yeah. And that makes a big difference as well. Now, as far as the company, what are your goals for it? I know you're recruiting. Mm -hmm. uh, you and I are going to be working together. I'm excited about that. And let me just say this really quickly that working with you is not just an opportunity, but it's, I think it's going to be a really good pleasure. And the reason why I say that is because other companies like, hey, James, you get your license. Come on over here. Work. Mm -hmm. But the mental capacity that you have and your focus is unlike mm -hmm. any other I've seen before. And I really respect that in you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Have a few conversations. Now, if I came in and you were talking about, I'm going to sell these policies to get a Bugatti, it's like, okay, Jen, I'm out. Because <laughs> Brooke is not focused. She's on the wrong thing. Yeah. But you were really invested in saying, James, we want to help people. We want to yes. build people. We want to educate. And that makes the difference. Yeah. Now, where's the company? Where, where do you want to go? How do agents contact you? What is the next level that you see for the franchise? For me, it's definitely about, you know, servicing the clients we have here at Remax Champions. Okay. And really reaching out to the agents, reaching out to the, you know, the clients coming through escrow and supporting them. Right. And you did mention, yeah, building a team. I do have people who are interested in what I'm doing and, okay. you know, the services I provide and it definitely adds in seamlessly if you're an agent. Right. If you're selling a house, you know, why not add an okay, do you have a way to protect, right. you know, against the illness. Right. Um, but in terms of growth, I think that I kind of see myself now moving into the team building phase and okay. just training others on you know how I made my way through this right. industry because it does take time it does it does it's a take, process it's a process yes. not everything comes easy right. so supporting them on their journey right. moving into financial services okay um, and creating you know financial abundance for themselves as well that makes it I think that's what's really like sticking with me right now is creating opportunities for those around me who are interested to mm -hmm. create their own financial abundance and serve their clients as well right 
you have to let the people know, don't get carried away with social media because people mm -hmm. will have you looking at social media thinking that you're going to get rich overnight by doing two yeah. or three policies. That's not the case. Yeah, and right. in some cases, in any industry, you can make a lot of money if you don't care about the person that you're making the money with. Mm -hmm. But that's not, that's not your integrity or your mindset that's with this business. Absolutely. Yeah. Your fulfillment is being able to help that person. Exactly. And that makes a difference. So now let me ask you, if, uh, if I go into, as an agent, or you have an agent working with you, if we go into, we sell a house to Miss Smith, and Miss Smith says, hey, you know what, I want some other financial aspects or help, you can help them with that. Yes, yeah, okay. of course. You can get that. And then the other thing we talked about yesterday is, and I didn't know, and you answered this so profoundly, that children as young as five to maybe seven years old, you can start with a policy for them yeah. to make sure by the time they get older, they have so much money. Talk to the people about that really quick, because that blew yeah. my mind. I'm upset that I didn't do that for my children, but tell people about that education that you told me. Yeah, you can buy child policies, life insurance policies for your kids. You're the owner of it, though. Okay. You know, they're not the owner until you relinquish control or they're at a certain age. Right. Um, but you can start you know, investing into them and into their future, getting a return on investment as well in these life insurance policies. Right. They're so... They're so different from what people think they are. Okay. People think of life insurance as a cost. Right. When in reality, you can build cash value. It's an investment. It's an investment. Right. You can grow your money. So if you start young, you get better, um, I'll say fees, lower fees, because okay. they're healthy, they're young. And you're pouring into this policy, getting a 5 to 7% return on investment. Ooh, that's good. Exactly. And then by the time they're 18 or you know 20, you can use it for a college fund. Okay. If you don't want to use it for a college fund, let it keep growing, you know, keep pouring into it. Maybe they want to buy a house and that's your gift to your child. Okay, right. here's the funds to buy a house. It's right. a down payment. If you don't want that either, let it keep growing and it can be their retirement. <laughs> right, so or they get married. Or know, they get yeah, married, yeah. but you can tap into these policies okay. based on your needs. Right. You know, based on your long-term goals. And you just really have to think, though, what are your goals for this policy for my kid? Right. You know, why, why am I pouring into this? And then just take it from there. Got you. Something like that, if I'm a parent, I'm not, my children are older, but if I have a seventh or a grandson or a younger child, what would that run me based on that health? I mean, because obviously nine and a half times out of ten, unless they mm -hmm. have some ailments, they're going to be pretty healthy. What would that cost someone? What would that investment be monthly? It depends. Okay. I mean, it depends on your budget. It depends how much you want to invest into your kid. I have people who... Pour into a child plan only fifty dollars. Okay, so let's say minimum fifty. And I'd then what do you minimum. see the higher the higher end? Um, I've had people put in three hundred. Oh wow! Okay. I have a girl who she's younger. She's not a child, but you know she's she's my age. She's okay. twenty two. Okay. Um, she's putting in fifteen hundred monthly into gotcha. her policy. So by the time she's sixty five, her retirement is ridiculous. Mm, yeah, right. <laughs> ridiculous. But well, it depends on that budget. Your budget. Your you discretionary income. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. And that the one thing I like what you said is that if there's a range. You Because some people, when you go and meet with them about a policy, you have to do this because they're yeah. thinking the premium and I'm going to make so much money. That's not the thought process behind you. Is what's going to fit you, what can you afford, yes. and then what's going to be long term. And then if you do a policy like that, can you always increase it? Let's say you get a yes. raise or your budget increases. Can you do things like that? Definitely. Okay, you good. Can, you can, I would say don't go lower because right. you have to fund it correctly, but you can always go higher. Well, higher, okay. You can pour in as much money as you want okay, and you know, have it compounding as much as you want. What I will say is um, you know, it does depend on discretionary income, right? And also your health. Okay. So if you're maybe you're 40 or 50 and you know, you're in pretty good health, you're going to have you're going to be building great cash value. Okay. If you're in poor health and you know, you've had heart attacks, cancer, stroke, things like that, that's where it becomes tricky and I have to figure out which carrier to work with to get you a policy that's, you know, made with integrity. Got you. So your health does depend, though, on the rating you get with okay. these life insurance policies. Let me ask, one thing that's important before I let you go is I hear a lot about, and I've been studying it about just the, what is it called specifically? It's called, uh, you can help me with this, mm -hmm. when you just, a burial insurance. If someone says, hey, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure my family does not have to have a GoFundMe or pay me, is that something they can do outside of a regular term or regular policy? That is. You know, you can you can have an annuity. Okay. If you want, you could pour into the annuity. Um, this, that's more for retirement, but I would say life insurance is, is similar to right. the funeral expenses. Okay. Oh, so that's, so what, that's the proper name, funeral expenses. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if someone just wants to cover their funeral expenses, they can get a policy for that? Exactly. Okay, good. Yes. Good. Well... I wanted to let the people know where to come for quality service and not just because I'm working with you, I don't mm -hmm. want people to think that I'm biased, but you mm -hmm. really have a standard that you are working by that's impressive, that you don't see in this industry a lot. Mm -hmm. And I want people to be able to reach out to you and say, hey, I want to 
have you give me a policy or I want you to protect my house or my family. And then let me ask you this other question. Can people, let's say I see on social media, a lot of people already have policies with their job. Mm -hmm. Can you look at that or they already have a policy with another company? Can you look at those as well and yes. help them out with that? Yeah, most definitely. Okay. Well, that's what we love to do. We love okay. to see the policies out there and say, okay, let me get you something better. Let me put more money in your pocket. Let me serve you better. Okay. Because in the insurance industry, um, if you're an agent, it is like the Wild West. You can right. structure the policies how you want. Got it. So that's why we label ourselves as a discount brokerage. Okay. We want to put more money in our clients' pockets. So gotcha. yeah, we can definitely look at policies and see what we could do for our clients. Now, discount brokers, because you're saying discount brokers, that doesn't mean that you discount on a service. You're saying no. discount brokers because you can find Lower better fees. Okay. Yeah. Lower fees, which make a difference mm -hmm. to help people. So whereas one person may say, hey, I only have this, I have, you have a variety, mm -hmm. which makes exactly. it good. Okay, which is good. I like that. And then, let me see, there's a couple more things I want, because I know I keep saying I'm going to let you go, but I want to try <laughs> to get all of it out as I'm thinking about it, which I think is really good. But the other part to that is, oh, your health. How much does that play a part? Oh, two things. So the health, before I forget, the health and how much that plays a part. And then two, a lot of people, especially older people, don't like to go through a needle process or have a nurse to come out. Can someone get something without going through that process as well? Yes. Okay. There is, you know, your health does play into it, right? Because right? you're a risk if you have... You high know, blood pressure, high blood you're pressure. smoking, alcohol, things exactly. like that. Exactly. Okay. So your health does play into it. There are policies that require no, you know, medical exam. Okay. There we go. That's good. No medical exam. No Elaborate medical on that a little bit. It's just based what on... What it sounds like. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's that. You don't need to <laughs> no go to a doctor. Exam. You don't need to go get blood drawn. You don't need okay. to go get any samples or anything like that. Now, is that, is that a lower quality policy or is that still a good policy? It's still a good policy. Um, it just depends on the person. Got like it. if they have poor health and they don't want to do any medical go through any medical procedures um, or exams, their fees might be higher okay. because they're, you know, they're not wanting to right. explain or, you know, show their current health. Got it. So their fees in the policy might be a little bit higher. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the offset to that, someone says, hey, I don't want to go through that. I don't mind paying. I can still get protected and not have to go through that process. Say that again? The offset to not getting the, the offset to having the higher fees is that they don't have to go through the process of having a nurse come out and have blood drawn, yeah, they can still get a, yeah. a good policy. Yeah, and I mean, at the end of the day, you still get that death benefit, you know, Okay. when you pass away. And that's the most important thing. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. leave a legacy to your kids, yes. to your beneficiaries, everything like that. Brooke, thank you so much for coming on Entrepreneur Monday. This is episode 10. I wanted to say that I can see you carrying on your mom's legacy. You've done a wonderful job. And if people want to get in contact with you, what's the best method for them to reach you? I would say Instagram. Instagram. So I have a popple code link okay. in my bio. That's the best way to reach me. Okay. Can people DM you as well? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. So DM Brooke, hit the popple code. And also when you see her, encourage her to do reels on <laughs> the insurance because I'm having a hard time. She's absolutely resistance. wonderful. Yeah. A lot of resistance, <laughs> but I know she's going to do great. So when you see her, give her a shout out and say, Hey Brooke, how about that reel? And then that'll encourage her to do that. With that being said, thank you so much for coming on again. Thank you all so much for watching Entrepreneur Monday. Until the next episode, we'll see you soon.